Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. You have reached the recap for episode number six. The name of this episode is Rooftop Romance and Red Flags. Let's just get right into this recap. Continuing with Cheyenne at the hypnosis thing, Dr. Mike asks Cheyenne, does this mean the friendship is over? She says she doesn't need anything from Mackenzie. Jade says that she doesn't think Dr. Mike understands how deep this situation really was. Dr. Mike says to Cheyenne, you really don't like this person, do you? Based on your body language, you don't. And Cheyenne says, you know what? You're right. I don't like her. And Cheyenne says that she doesn't think Mackenzie understood the power that she had behind her words. She says she didn't understand the power of all the extra stuff she did too, as far as the going on live, crying, and all this other stuff that she did. What Mackenzie thinks is a small problem, no big deal, was a big deal to Cheyenne in her life. Cheyenne says this hypnosis workshop really took a turn and she doesn't feel this is a place for apologies not only that it's awkward very awkward i don't know when it became couples therapy for me and mckenzie mckenzie apologizes again mckenzie says the fact that this was her fault and cheyenne got involved started with her but Mackenzie says just because that part clicks for her does not mean that she gets it. Mackenzie doesn't know how Cheyenne feels, but she sees it. Cheyenne's reaction to Mackenzie apologizing is the same as when she apologized the first time. She just answers that apology with okay. Mackenzie is uncomfortable for everybody including herself. Dr. Mike says, good work, you can go back. Cheyenne says she's so uncomfortable and she actually gets up and she leaves during the session. And Cheyenne says she was open in the beginning to do this session, but she's at the point right now where she doesn't even wanna see Dr. Mike again. Mackenzie says to Dr. Mike, can we not do this anymore? Cheyenne is literally tired of talking to this and this constantly being brought up over a mistake that I made. Dr. Mike is all, where's Cheyenne? And he goes up to her and she's like, I just need a second. Back to the guys in the ice tubs. Micaiah says they all look like they're cool as cucumbers. Take that into your next argument. Micaiah says, how does this relate to you and Kayla to Ryan? And Ryan says that they've been together 10 years. Micaiah asks, has this been on and off? And he says, yes. And Micaiah says, what is it that makes it go off? And Ryan says, I would say it's a mixture of if I'm talking to somebody else. Corey says, talking to somebody else? Your focus should be on your pregnant girlfriend right now. You guys already got enough stuff to figure out. Ryan says that back and forth with other people is because of being young and dumb. But now they realize they need stability as they get older. Micaiah asks if he has decided if he wants to stay in the relationship. Ryan says they're figuring it out. They lack trust and communication. So Micaiah says that he needs to trust himself with the issues coming up so that he can better understand what he needs to be happy and fulfilled in a relationship. Ryan is confused about the baby. He's confused about their relationship, but he hopes that being here at this retreat, vacation, whatever the hell, will help them communicate better. Now Zach is talking crap because he doesn't even know what this damn exercise is about. Zach, do you speak English? You just did not understand. He says he learned from this ice bath when things get hot, just stay cold. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know, guys. I That's what I gather from what Zach said. Micaiah encourages Zach to speak up more. She senses that he doesn't. Zach admits to us here that he's very much a mighty mouse. Okay, he comes off like he's so strong on the outside with all those muscles and tattoos. But in the end, he's a mouse when it comes to Cheyenne because he doesn't say anything. And I'm really sorry if I dated myself talking about Mighty Mouse. MTV producers, I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart that you didn't make us go through every single guy asking what they learned from this experience. I just want to thank you. I should sing a song in thanks for you, but I can't even think of any thank you songs. So the guys and girls are back and they're talking about their prospective separate exercises that they just did. And Kate was saying how she doesn't feel like Dr. Mike had any ill will, but she understands why Cheyenne and Mackenzie were irritated by that. And Taylor says, it's already taxing enough talking about our relationships all damn day. So Cheyenne is sitting here and she's talking to Zach and she's letting Zach know how uncomfortable she was and how nobody understands her being in the midst of all these white folks. And she's the only black one in there having this conversation. Zach says Cheyenne is pissed 
and he feels that Dr. Mike should have just left that situation with Mackenzie and Cheyenne alone. Cheyenne says that she dealt with the Mackenzie situation two years ago. She's open to a conversation, which you guys have already had a conversation. The girl's already apologized twice now. Just let it go. And this is coming from a freaking black woman. But also, I also recognize I cannot tell people how to feel. So if she feels like she wants to hold a grudge, who the hell am I to say anything about it? Zach is talking about the challenge that him and the guys had, and he's explaining it wrong again, and I'm over it. Mackenzie's taking her three minute breather, and she says that just her presence there is hurting people, and she, she only ever wanted love. Cassanio thinks it's time for both of them to move on. He's never experienced this in Jamaica. Cheyenne, Zach, and Ryan are sitting by each other and Cheyenne asks if she can ask a personal question and she says the baby. Ryan says he's confused and as he's talking, Dr. Mike comes over there. Dr. Mike sincerely apologizes. Cheyenne accepts his apology, says that she knows that he didn't mean any harm. And I really wish that you would understand that maybe Mackenzie didn't mean harm. I mean, yes, she did harm but she, maybe she didn't mean harm, maybe she really is sorry. So now we're here with the crew and Cheyenne says, you know what? The day didn't go as I expected it to, so let's just go out and party. They're at the rooftop bar having the time of their freaking lives. Cheyenne admits that this animosity between her and Mackenzie is emotionally draining. So she decides to call Mackenzie and Cassanio over to her and Zach so they can hash it out real quick and like move past the situation. Cheyenne, are you bipolar? I just got questions. I'm not a psychologist or a psychotherapist. I'm just asking a question. Just asking a question. So Cheyenne admits she didn't want to get to know either one of those people. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is not nice. Anyway, I don't know if they needed to know that you didn't want to get to know them, Cheyenne. Okay. She says about herself, oh, she gives people grace. She gives people grace, but she's not giving Mackenzie the grace to not beat herself up and to be gracious with herself. Cheyenne, I'm beginning to believe that you're a flip flopper. So I don't even know if I'm believing what you're saying right now. Are you going to try to be cool with Mackenzie now? Is this going to last for the end of the episode or are you going to be different next episode? How's it going to be? Mackenzie says that Cheyenne is using the word grace towards her and it means a lot to her because it reminds her of her mom. And Cheyenne says towards Mackenzie that she cannot be vulnerable around the other girls because she's holding herself back because of this situation. Before for the situation with Mackenzie and Cheyenne at the hypnosis session, Cheyenne said that about herself, she did learn that she's a control freak. She tries to control everything in her life and she needs to let go. Cheyenne thinks forgiveness is only going to help her in the long run. Cheyenne proposes to Mackenzie. She just wants to have a clean slate, start from fresh, and let's just put all this behind. Zach says that he's very proud of Cheyenne and how she's handling this. Mackenzie feels that a huge weight has been lifted off her shoulders. They're starting anew. They say so much on this damn show and don't say anything. I'm just gonna tell you what everybody said together. Everybody's happy that Cheyenne and Mackenzie is putting this behind them. Jade tells Taylor that Ryan's behavior towards Kayla about those photos was pretty rude. Ryan even told Kayla not to post the pictures. He was telling her that she was sweaty. And Taylor told Jade that Ryan said he didn't wanna be on Instagram with her, which Jade found strange. And she says, you know, how F boys are, they'll be like, oh, I'm not on social media. Whole time they're on social media. Media. They just don't want their other girls to know. She thinks it's a bad sign when someone avoids posting on other people's social media. And Jade says Ryan is a hoe. Kayla asks Ryan how many shots he had and Ryan claimed that he wasn't counting. And Kayla says she heard it was 10. Ryan says as long as he's controllable. I'm really sorry, but I thought when you said the word controllable, you slurred your words. As long as I'm controllable. I wonder if I heard right. It sounded like you were slurring your words though. Kayla says she doesn't like when Ryan drinks because he gets bold and he doesn't know how to control his freaking mouth. And Jade thinks Ryan should be making sure that Kayla is good. And Taylor says that she noticed Ryan was with Corey the entire time. Ryan admits to Kayla that he was drinking too much with Zach and Cody. Who the hell is Cody? Okay, I think you're thinking of a different TV show. Um, <laughs> That alcohol got you thinking of the Disney Channel, Ryan. Anyway, Kayla corrects him and he says, Corey. Jade thinks that Ryan should be more supportive, especially considering Kayla's past pregnancies where she was just having a horrible time. Taylor says that she asked Corey to talk to Ryan because right now Ryan is only focused on drinking and hanging out with the guys instead of taking care of his pregnant girlfriend. Corey says that he promised Taylor that he would talk to Ryan about his behavior. Corey advises
advises Kayla to tell Ryan he needs to calm the hell down. He lets Ryan know that he needs to support Kayla. So Corey talks to the both of them. He says he understands Kayla's probably feeling lonely. He reminds Ryan of his duty to make her feel safe. Corey recognizes Ryan's stress about the baby and advises him to relax. Ryan values Corey's advice, seeing that it's of genuine concern. Corey stresses the seriousness of parenthood and he urges the both of them to talk openly. Ryan admits that they've avoided discussing the pregnancy but he does hope for clarity. And then Kayla says, To me, no answer is the worst answer. I'd rather you tell it to me straight and be like, I don't want to be with you. I don't want a baby. Kayla, why are you putting the ball in his court waiting for his freaking answer? The answer is, I'm going to the clinic and I ain't having this baby. Not with him. That's my answer. You know, I'm not you, but that's what I would do because ain't no way in hell this man gonna be my baby daddy. Ain't, ain't no way. You need to make the decision for yourself. It's obviously not working. You guys didn't even want to get on the same plane together come on so he just got done talking with Corey and Corey telling him he needs to slow the hell down and here he is with another bottle this man don't listen he's definitely the problem so after Ryan takes that drink this is Cheyenne's reaction looking over at Zach and Zach is over here talking about taking shots so Cheyenne says to Zach that they had an agreement that he would stay sober while she got to party so now they're privately talking Zach and Cheyenne and Zach tells Cheyenne that she's asking too much and should let him take the lead as a man. He says he feels embarrassed by her talking about drink limits in front of other people. They never even had drink limits before. They both would drink when they went out. And Cheyenne answers him, okay. But Zach wants more than that. He finds that disrespectful because he feels like her saying okay is how she treats strangers on the street and he's her husband. Zach says he's a grown man and he doesn't want to be controlled. He's feeling like she's treating him. You, you got me hanging on no string now. I'm so sorry, guys. But you knew it was coming because there was a couple of, of these recaps where I didn't sing, damn it, or was there? I don't remember. Anyway, he says that he feels like Cheyenne has him as a puppet on string, child. Cheyenne acknowledges, you know, you did say I need to relinquish control. I don't know if that was a form of apology. I didn't, I did not hear her say, I'm sorry. I just heard her acknowledge, okay, you did say that you wanted me to relinquish control. So put in the comment section if you think that's a form of apology, guys. I, I maybe you're acknowledging that, okay, what he's saying is right, but I don't think I personally don't see that as an apology, but okay. Zach is still upset and he calls her disrespectful. Diane is confused. She's wondering, where did she go wrong with her apology? Girl, I can think of a couple things. First of all, you didn't say sorry. Okay, first of all, Zach thinks that Cheyenne is not listening. He gets up, he walks away. Cheyenne says to Zach, I thought you sat in that ice bath today. Zach says, you know what? You have a point. He's chuckling. He's coming back to sit down and talk. And Zach and Cheyenne talk. And what it boils down to is that Zach wasn't ready to hear her apology at that time. And he was unable to vocalize that. And Zach admits that that was his fault. So Cheyenne apologizes again. Didn't sound like much of an apology to me, but alrighty then. Then she says that she needs a minute by herself. Corey says he can tell there's some awkwardness and tension between Cheyenne and Zach. So he's staying the hell out of it. Taylor and Jade go to check up on Cheyenne, who is in the bathroom crying. Cheyenne vents to the girls about how her and Zach's plan for the night fell apart as soon as they got there because Zach got upset because she mentioned the drinking in front of others. Cheyenne is frustrated because she wants to relax and drink and have fun, but she feels like she can't because Zach is over here drinking and can't have her back. Jade compares Zach's reaction to her own experiences with Sean because he says the same thing. So Corey talks to Zach about how he suspects that Cheyenne doesn't focus on Zach's needs. And Zach says, no, 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 no. She does focus on my needs, but there are parts that she needs to focus more on. Zach admits that they argue sometimes, but usually not in public like this. And he wants to make things right with Cheyenne. So now they're back together talking alone, Zach and Cheyenne. And they talk about the situation and they make up quickly. Cheyenne says they rarely stay mad at each other. And they're over here hugging it out. She says she's still mad. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, they've learned not to run from problems and talk it out. And it's back to the partying. Now Macy and Taylor go into the reminiscing of how long they've been together and the things that they've learned on this trip. Yada, yada, yada. Yaggity, smackity. 
Everybody is back home the next morning and Kate says it's awkward in the house because of uh, that situation with Kayla and Ryan. Caitlin says she doesn't know what's going on, but something isn't right. Dr. Mike, do you ever come in the afternoon? You know these people have been partying all night and you be coming there early in the mother freaking morning and I don't understand why. Dr. Mike is there for Kayla and Ryan for their private session and uh, Kayla's excited because they do need the help, but she's also nervous. Cheyenne says Ryan and Kayla have the most to work out in the house. Ryan is extremely nervous. Dr. Mike says that he's here to help with the relationship and he noticed that they were separate when he was downstairs coming to get them and he feels tension there. And Kayla, Kayla says there's no tension. Dr. Mike says, I do this for a living. I read body language for a living. He asks Ryan, is there tension? And Ryan says, yes. He says, we put things off and then come back and try to act like everything is so happy. Ryan's biggest issues are with trust. Kayla admits that she has a hard time communicating things to Ryan. Yeah, they're talking about what made them fall in love with each other. Who the hell cares? Because they're out of love now. Dr. Mike has Kayla do an exercise with her eyes closed. He's reading her posture as though Kayla doesn't want to let Ryan in. Frankly, I can't say that I blame her. Dr. Mike asks Kayla to tell him about a memory that made her start shutting down and she doesn't want to say. She says she was six years old, but she does not want to talk about it. Dr. Mike, please don't push her. If she was abused. It's not up to you to push that out of her. You have to allow her to keep that to herself and express it when she's ready. Okay? Trauma is something that's very personal. Obviously, it's something traumatic. She doesn't want to share it. She's crying. Dr. Mike allows her not to say it in a way, but he still probes her and finds out that she was taken advantage of against her will. Dr. Mike says that you've learned to protect yourself and that's what he's seeing in her. Dr. Mike asks Orion if he knew that Kayla was a survivor of being taken advantage of against her will. Dr. Mike says to Kayla that in order to get through this, we have to get rid of the Kayla that doesn't want to talk about this. No comment. Kayla says she has to feel safe with the men in her life in order to open up to them. Mike tells Kayla that she needs to talk about it, that she hasn't told Ryan and that's the person that she needs to tell. Ryan says his first thought when he heard about the abuse that Kayla suffered was anger towards the situation because in his family, there have been women who have also been through the same thing. Ryan admits that he gets angry. Kayla has admitted that she shuts down and Dr. Mike says, so do you understand what's at the core of this situation? Dr. Mike orchestrates some words. Look at her, Kayla, thank you for. Kayla, thank you for opening up. Thank you for telling me something I did not know that really hurt you. And what I want to do for that six-year-old girl in you is give you the protection that you need, show you the love and affection that you need. Do I believe that Ryan believes what he's saying? Absolutely not, but yeah. Dr. Mike asks Kayla, what does she really want? And Kayla says, the baby is a huge issue. Dr. Mike asks of Ryan and he says to Ryan, 100% being all in, willing to stay and stick it out through the long run, what percentage are you in regards to the baby and Kayla? Ryan says out of 100%, he's about 60 to 70%. Dr. Mike says that Kayla is carrying your child and you're only 60 to 70% in. What is that like for you? Ryan says he feels very confused. Dr. Mike says, well, there are three options you have for this baby. And you guys know what those three options are. A smortion, adoption, or you keep the baby. There's only three options I can think of. So Dr. Mike says, so you've thought about those three things? Kayla says that she hasn't thought about it. She just kind of pushed it out of her mind. I, I just want to understand how you push a baby out of your mind. You're going to mess around. You're going to be waiting too long. And you're going to be pushing that baby out of your coop. Uh, uh, uh. Never mind. I'm just saying. Dr. Mike says time is just rolling. Okay, time waits for no one. Kayla says she doesn't want to talk about this ish. You need to talk about it. You were the one who was so excited to come talk about y'all problems. And here you are trying to avoid it again. Y'all really do need to talk about this and what y'all going to do. Because like I said, okay, you're going to soon have only two choices. Okay, termination going to be out of the picture. You have two choices. All right, everybody. That is the end of this recap. I hope you enjoyed my um, rendition of what the hell went on on this damn episode. We are sliding right over to episode number seven, my lucky number. Maybe some funny things will happen. I don't know, but I didn't expect there to be so much drama for this um, season because, you know. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.